What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today is a sad day. I'm about to embark on a trip. I'm gonna be gone for a while. I got lots of videos to record for you guys while I'm gone because I'm hitting uh, a couple different places for you. Uh, and I decided while I'm gone, I'm gonna go ahead and dump some of this stuff back here and turn it into cash and see if we can't do something else with it. But uh, I do wanna give a proper farewell and goodbye to a few of the cars. The Pontiac GTO should be headed out very, very shortly. Um, sooner than the GTO though, the 74 El Camino is on its way out today. It's heading out and as you can see, I left the bumper in it as I said I would. And the, uh, the Ram, the, sorry, 99 Dodge Ram, not to be confused with the Ram, but the 99 Dodge Ram is also headed out today. So for sure, this one and this one are gonna be put onto tow trucks and they're going to be heading up to insurance auto auction. So before that happens, I decided we were gonna kinda just take one last look at them. I wanted you to see under the hood because it got dark on me that day and you weren't able to see the, uh, the job that the super clean product did under here made it look phenomenal. Look at this. You guys remember what it looked like when we bought it, right? I mean, it was, uh, she was pretty rough. She was pretty rough. The engine was covered in this rusty looking goo uh, from that radiator that had been busted for God knows how many years. But take a look at her now. She is clean. Very, very clean under here. Looks good. It should run well. So let's go ahead and fire this one up real quick. I have faith it's going to fire up with, uh, oops, with no problems at all. I got the keys sitting to each one of the cars. The Cavalier over there, I haven't forgotten about the Cavalier. We'll take a look at it too. Here we go. Let's see if we have any warning lights on. Oh, wow. There you go. Well, she hasn't run in a while, guys. These cars typically just sit back here. Very rarely do I come back here and fire them up. There she is. No warning lights. Look at that uh, dash pad right there. Nice. I'm going to roll the window down. Yes, the important window works. I just don't want it to accidentally lock on us. Nobody wants that. Let's run over real quick just because the little Cavalier... The little Cavalier is the most neglected car out here. Nobody ever starts it. No, <laughs> I can't, honestly, I have no idea when the last time I came out and started this car was. Uh, let's see what she wants to do. Uh-oh, I got the wrong key? No way. This might be the El Camino key. That's the El Camino key. Okay, in, in that case, we'll come over here and we'll start the El Camino. She doesn't like to run when she's cold anyway. So we should be able to just put this key right in the ignition and fire the old girl up. Don't, don't dent the GTO now. There we go. Look at that. The El Camino starts like it's nothing, man. Now that I got her running on all eight cylinders, listen to that. Boy, all right, this should be the Cavalier. There we go. Oh, apparently last time I was in it, I was listening to some music though. All right, here we go. Fired right up. Oh, the air conditioning's on. Oh, well, it's a good time to see if the AC still works because we did the AC on this. It had to be a couple weeks ago. I can already tell you it works. It's ice cold. That is ice cold. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, man. Don't worry. This one's not leading. Not yet anyway. I'm not sure what else we're going to do to it other than maybe try to straighten up that bumper a little bit. Um, it is going to the auto spa tomorrow. They're going to try to salvage the paint. I don't know. I don't know. I think the paint is a little too far gone, but I've seen the auto spa work miracles on this. 
uh, type of stuff before. So stay tuned for that. We'll come back with an auto spa detail. I'll have to do the interior and the exterior as well. And as I said, this one's on its way out today. This one's on its way out today. And this one, if it's not heading out today, will be heading out any day now. I put the tag on this one. So let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up real quick. Oh, I love starting this one up. I do. And we'll take it for a quick spin around the block. Oh, I mean, it's only 8.30, 8.40 in the morning. People, I love this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Roll these windows down. As you can see, they both work. There's a mailman. I'm going to miss this one. I am going to miss this one. I've always wanted a, a, uh, a GTO. Always wanted a GTO. Now I got one. And here I am getting rid of her. It's a crying shame. Man, that clutch is so good, too. She's got a strong clutch. And that SLP exhaust is just right for this car, man. It is. Oh, yeah, I forgot how strong those brakes are, too. Brakes are great. Let's see if we can get some of that snap, crackle, pop going on down the road here. Man, let me tell you, <laughs> this car gets it. pull us over i didn't see him damn it randy wait wait here he comes never mind he's coming she's no he's not well he sure turned around i don't see him though hold on hold on is he coming or not damn it i did not see him sitting there man. <laughs> it doesn't look like he's coming he turned around but he's not coming Okay, well, hell, screw that. Let's get out of here before he changes his mind. I guess we made it. We didn't get pulled over. <laughs> I can't believe there was a cop sitting there, man. Uh, usually this early in the morning, I know this area pretty well, guys. And, and usually this early in the morning, uh, there's never a cop sitting out there. Uh, I'm going to have to remember that, though. I'm going to make a mental note of that right now. Um, damn, I'm going to miss this car. God, I don't want to get rid of it. I already sent the information to insurance auto auctions, though, so it's pretty much a done deal. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get rid of it, though. I really don't. That hail damage is just so bad. I don't see any way of fixing it. I want, I want to be very clear about something, guys. We'll take this one out next. I want to be very clear about something. I did not buy the GTO as a rebuild. I didn't. I bought the GTO simply because I've never had one. I always wanted one. It was an impulse buy. It was not something to bring to the channel and do a rebuild on. I just wanted to have it, drive the hell out of it and then send it down the road. And I've done that. I've had such a great time with this car, man. Uh, I am so happy with it. Uh, I was able to basically buy it from the auction, jump in, not basically, I bought it from the auction and I jumped in it and I drove it. And I've been hammering on it ever since. And you can't, you can't kill this car. This car is fire, man. Um, I'll definitely have a lot number for you guys stock number when this goes up for sale now let's take out the 1999 dodge ram sport and i want to be very clear this is a sport guys i've had a lot of people say they're not sure that it really is i don't know how well you can see this on camera but right there is an s p o r t okay there is a sport let me see if i can change angles or something i don't think i can it's so faded 
um, but it does say sport down both sides of the hood also it says dodge in the back tailgate here which has been faded out as, re as well right there i doubt you can see it but there's a d-o-d-g-e right there as well you probably can't see it but let's throw this plate on it take it for one last cruise and we'll take the uh the el camino and then after the el camino well we'll go ahead and take the cavalier out even though it's not a we're not saying farewell to the caddy we're gonna go ahead and drive boy it's a little warm in here should we roll the window down let's turn on the air condition actually ignore that little bit of a groan from the uh air conditioner or the blower motor there she likes to grown just a tad bit oh she's torquey i forgot <laughs> i haven't driven this in a while either she's a torquey girl man this uh this is the 5.9 360 cubic inch v8 and uh i'm telling you right now this sucker's got some torque she also got some rattles you know all the plastic crap that these uh auto manufacturers used back in the uh, 80s late 70s 80s 90s well hell all the way to today really but they were particularly crappy in the 80s and the 90s this truck look at this she just cruises down the road man not a care in the world such a good ride man this is a good vehicle right here great vehicle We'll take this around. Let's see if that cop is still sitting there. I know for a fact he moved. I saw the headlights. I saw the headlights move when I went flying by screaming in that GTO. Uh, I seen those headlights flip around. I was like, oh, dude, he's coming. He's coming. But I guess he just repositioned himself. Uh, very thankful. Um, officer decided to, to give a guy a break today, I guess. So no complaints there at all. All right, let's get her out on the road, take her for a quick spin. All right, here we go. Let's see if he's still here. He was up here on left. You guys probably couldn't see him. Okay, where is he? Where is he? I don't see him. Hell, maybe he did decide to come after him, but I, I got away too quick. He wasn't quick enough to keep up with me. <laughs> That's unlikely. I'm I'm just I'm totally kidding right now. No, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if he ended up uh, coming out coming after me, but I didn't see him. I was keeping an eye on my rear view for those lights. Uh, I didn't see him coming after me. So maybe he just, had, he just had something else to do. Look at this old girl. No no warning lights at all now. Air conditions ice cold. Oh man, I, lo I love this one too. I love this one too. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you guys what's up. Cause I got a lot of people asking why the hell I'm getting rid of these cars. You wanted to see me do this, that, and the other with them. And we're gonna get into that at the very end. I just want to take you guys for a quick spin in these bad boys before we say goodbye to them on this channel forever. Well, the truck made it back, no issues. El Camino died. That's all right. We'll come back to you in a minute. Let's go ahead and take the Cavi out just because, just because we're already here. The Cavalier is running. El Camino was like, hell no, we're not doing this today. All right. Will the Cavalier run and drive? We already know it will, man. We've, we've driven this car. Uh, didn't we drive this to, yeah, we drove this to AR headquarters, man. <laughs> Uh-oh, we got a temp light. We got a temp light. Whoa, hold on now. That was unexpected. That was, a, well, at least we know the light works. Uh, the cooling fan was on, but the air conditioning is also on. So where is the daggum hood release to this car? What's going on, old girl? Boy, she needs belts. Look at that belt right there. Whew, power steering belt is in bad shape. Well, she's not gurgling. She's not smoking. I think she's all right, guys. Yeah, she doesn't even feel hot. I just put my hand on the hose right there. It doesn't even feel hot, guys. I think she's all right. I think she's all right. Give me a minute. We'll come back. I'll double check a few things and make sure everything's good under here. 
and then uh, we'll take her out for a spin. All right, I've thoroughly checked everything out and I did add a little bit of coolant to it, about half a gallon. So I don't know, maybe she's got a slight leak or something, but I don't believe she was overheated, guys. I really don't. She fired right up and the temp light's not on. It's only been a few minutes. All right, let me get buckled in. Let's take her for a spin. All right, here we go. Now remember, we got brand new tires on this bad boy as well, so she drives absolutely great now. No more flat spots. The speedometer is right on point. The speedometer is exactly correct. I checked it against my phone's GPS. I, this car just goes, man. Horn works, air conditioning works, radio works, and that's about all the options you've got in a car like this. She doesn't come with much, but she doesn't need much. This is something that just kind of throws you back, man. It, when you're driving it, the brakes are so solid too. You can hear those tires, those brand new tires still squeaking. Oh, there's something about a new set of tires in there. It rides so good. Signals work, all the lights work. I love this little thing. Uh, there's some misconceptions about this car. I'll tell you what, when I hear people say some of the things that they say on, uh, on YouTube and Instagram and stuff in the comments, it, it, it really, it, it almost makes me laugh. You know, if it wasn't so pathetic, I, I probably would laugh. But I've had so many people tell me that the Cavalier cannot go any faster than 70 miles an hour that it's such a, a pathetic engine that it can only go 70 miles an hour. That's what it tops out at. And that you can't merge onto the interstate. It was dangerous in the 80s to merge onto the interstate in this. Well, let me tell you something, guys. I got a news flash for you here. I've had this car at 90, all right? And it still had a little bit more to go. Pegged out the 85 on the speedometer right there. Okay? She will go well over 70 miles an hour and as far as merging onto the interstate this car has no issues merging and that's today when people drive recklessly people drive a hell of a lot faster than they did in the 80s this car has no issues now, i'm not stomping on it right now but i mean this car has absolutely no issue oh there she goes spitting and sputting again this car has no issue even spitting and sputting a little bit, which by the way, that's a new symptom. This car has never done that, uh, except for the very, very first time I drove it when I drove it home. Uh, it did that on the way home. It hasn't done that since then. We've got 46,111 miles on it now. And I'm telling you, for those people that say that this car cannot get on the highway and it can't keep up with traffic, this car has no issues getting on the highway or keeping up with traffic. I guess the last one we're gonna fire up is the El Camino, but you know what? I need to pull it to the shop. She needs some air in that front tire. Well, hell guys, before we go much further, uh, I've got an auction. There you go, wake up, old girl. Come on, wake up. Let's pull this in the shop, put some air in the tires. And uh, I got an auction, and I'm currently winning a 1955, uh, 1955 Chevy Bel Air. Let's pull this in here, so I can put some air in these tires. Man, she runs good. She does. She runs really, really good. Pop the hood because that's uh, that's what my little portable air compressor connects to is the battery uh, oopsie daisy oh you look nice you look nice under there nelly all right let's go do this auction real quick air up these tires and uh let's get out of here all right here we go this is our 55 chevy are we gonna win it we won it last week we got it so there it is, our 1955 Chevy Bel Air. Highest bid was 10 and a quarter. I won it. 
but I also know that last week they countered me at a ridiculous number. I mean, super ridiculous. Nobody is going to, to accept what they're asking for. So we'll see what happens. You're probably wondering why I would be bidding on a burnt down 1955 Chevy. Well, stay tuned. I've got some ideas for some content out of this car. Now, back to what we were doing. I got the air in the tires. We'll take this one for a short drive. I ain't gonna take her as far as I did the other ones. Not because she won't make it, but uh, because, remember, we don't have valve cover gaskets on this to speak of. And that's a problem. Yeah, valve cover gaskets, believe it or not, are kind of important. Otherwise, you have a pretty nasty oil leak. So we'll take her for a we'll take her for a short spin here. We just won't go too far with her because of the uh, profusely leaking uh, lack of valve cover gaskets. Look at her go. <laughs> uh, she rides like she's on rocks, guys. The tires are bad, and the roads out here aren't good. But I'll tell you what, the old girl is cruising right down the road here, guys. Look at her. She stops on her own. There we go. Wow. I almost want to go ahead and take her for a ride, man. I really do. I really do. It'd be nice to take her out on the road. But uh, also, the tow truck just called and said that they are on their way. I'd be afraid to be gone too long. She's not going to die anymore. She's not going to spit and sput and cut out. While I wouldn't recommend driving her a long distance... I can say for sure that she'll drive. She will. She'll drive. You see what I'm doing? We're going to go ahead and take it out on the road against my better judgment after I said we weren't going to. Because once you're on this road, there's no going back. There is no going back from here, guys. Uh, I'm making a mistake. Okay, screw it. <laughs> There's all the gears, man. There's all the gears. I'm not sure the speedometer is right. In fact, I'm pretty certain that speedometer is wrong. Yeah, that speedometer is wrong. We're not going 30 because we're keeping up with traffic out here, guys. The speed limit out here is around 40. People usually do 45. I can't believe we're on the road. There's the uh, oil pressure and the water temp right there. Hopefully you guys can see it. Good oil pressure. Coolant temp is good. This is the, we're actually driving this car in the city. Can you believe that? Can you believe it? This car that was sitting in, a, in someone's backyard, I almost said in a field, in someone's backyard left abandoned. And here we are. We are driving her in the city. And she's doing it. Woo hoo! Yeah! Oh, girl, you make me so proud. You make me so proud. All right. Man, it's got to be done, though. And I'll explain that here in just a minute, guys. I will. It's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that we got to let some of these cars go but it's just uh it's it's necessary at this point let's pull her back into the drive and uh i'll do some splaining to y'all well there she is boys she runs like a champ manual windows oh, i can smell that oil burning whoo we <laughs> yeah i smell that oil burning Oh, I, I can clearly see the oil burning. 
Yep, you can see it coming up under the hood right there. <sighs> I'm sorry, I knew better. We shouldn't have taken her on a drive with the valve covers missing their gaskets. I just couldn't help it. I, I had to have it on the city streets, man. I had to have her out on the city. <sighs> and she did it. She did it. She made it all the way back. Even got on her. I didn't hammer it, but I got on her a little bit. And uh, she had no issues. None. These right here, guys, the Cavalier, the truck, the Elko, the GTO, these are four good cars right here, man. And uh, that one, that one, and that one are leaving. In fact, I just got confirmation on the GTO. It should be out of here today as well. I do have stock numbers for you guys, so let me jump into that real quick. We'll get you some stock numbers in case you're interested in bidding on any of these cars. Well, before we get out of here, I promised you that I'd talk about what was going on. I figure I'll go ahead and do that now, but first, I had to show you the uh, the 21 Road King again. She's dirty. She needs a bath. I've been riding it as much as I can, which isn't often enough. But uh, we do have 157 miles on her. 157 miles. And I know that's not much, especially given the amount of time I've had her. But I do go out and I ride her as often as I can. And for a brand new rider like me, putting 157 miles on a Road King... I mean, I think I'm doing all right. I think I'm doing all right. We have, uh, I gotta get this installed today. I'm gonna see if I can get Santa's workshop to help me. This is the backflip tonneau cover for the 21 Ram 2500. I've had a lot of you asking me how I'm liking it. And I've had a lot of you asking how many miles I've got on it now. Uh, I still haven't cleaned it all off. We still got some of that stuff right there to get off. But this is the Longhorn Limited. And you can see we took her out in the mud. Uh, we went and played with her a little bit. She's got some grass and stuff in her. I need to clean her a little bit, but boy, this interior never gets old. So when people ask me what my favorite feature of the truck is thus far, I'm telling you it's right here. It's under controls. And it's this one right here. This cooled seat. The humidity out here in Oklahoma right now is 99%. It's 90 degrees outside. And it is just so sticky hot. You jump in this truck, man, and all of a sudden, it just cools you down quick. This gold accent everywhere. Uh, it's got beautiful inlays, and it rides and drives like a dream. We currently have 430 miles on the truck. We are almost to the 500 mark. At 500 miles, we can put a trailer behind it. All right, so I'm still waiting. I got 70 miles to go. And I think we'll knock that out today when we go down to the AR headquarters to put that backflip tonneau cover on the truck. Um, I think we'll take it down to buyers and do that. We'll be well over the 500 mile mark when we get back. I'm loving this thing, guys. So everybody knows that I'm gonna be taking a trip soon. I've known about this for a while, but the trip is happening a little bit sooner than I had anticipated. And because of that, I decided to go ahead and unload some of these cars. It's not a financial thing, it's a time thing. Uh, because of how much stuff I've got to do while I'm gone, I, I, I don't think most people understand, and that's it's not important that you, you, you need to understand. You don't need to understand. The fact of the matter is, I have, I'm gonna guess, five videos to record in the course of the next two days. Um, three days total, really. Uh, five or six videos I plan on recording. I'm supposed to be meeting with some uh, people from Copart corporate office as well. I've got a ton of stuff coming that I need to get taken care of. And right now having all of these cars is nothing but a distraction. I don't need these things sitting here waiting. I don't need to be worried about what's happening. I don't need to be worried about parts. I need to focus on what I got coming up. So I decided to go ahead and let them all go. This way, while I'm gone, the cars will turn into money and I don't have to deal with them anymore. Then when I get back and I've got all my videos edited and I've had all my meetings and everything is figured out and I know what we're doing, then I can get back into these things. I just don't want the distractions of these cars. And I'm telling you, you may think they're just cars. Let me tell you something. When you do this for a living, when all you do is this, these cars are always on your mind. I'm laying in bed at night thinking, what am I going to do to this one? What am I going to do to this one? What, what do I do to What color do I make this one? What parts do I need to finish off this one? It's a lot to be on your mind all the time when you do this for a living and not just a hobby. So I decide I'm going to clear my mind. That's what, that's what it's all about. It's clear out the inventory, clear my head, and let's focus on the things that are coming right in front of us. And when I get back, we will pick up not where we left off, but we'll pick up with some new content. I got a few cool ideas. 
And uh, one of them involves that auction that you saw today. I think we're gonna do something really fun if I can ever get the insurance company to let go of that one. All right, are you ready for this? Stock number on the Pontiac GTO is 305-39591. Stock number on the El Camino is 305-19028. Stock number on the Dodge Ram pickup truck is 305 one nine zero four one. We'll go through that one more time. The GTO is three zero five three nine five nine one. The El Camino is three zero five one nine zero two eight. The Dodge Ram is three zero five one nine zero four one. These are all through insurance auto auctions. So uh, yeah, go go to IAA.com. Put those stock numbers in and should take you right to the cars where you can bid on them. I, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I believe these cars are gonna be in the, uh, what is today? 16th, they should be in the 16th auction. All right, I can't guarantee that with 100% certainty, but I am 99.9% .9 certain that these cars will be in the June 16th auction, Oklahoma City Insurance Auto Auction. So save those stock numbers, plug them in, put them on your watch list. Remember, if your state requires a dealership or a special license, you can generally use places like autobidmaster.com, A-U-T-O, bidmaster.com. They're a, uh, I don't know what you would call them exactly. Basically, they can bid on your behalf on these cars. I don't know the price. It's not sponsored, none of that stuff. Just wanted to throw that out there. It's to give everybody an equal opportunity to be able to bid on these cars. If you have a YouTube channel, I said this before and I'll say it again. If you have a YouTube channel, and you're gonna bid on one of these cars, all you gotta do is if you win, I'm more than happy to shout you out because I wanna watch the progress you make with these cars as well. I want to see what happens with these cars. And I'm sure plenty of people in my audience wanna see that as well. So if you got a YouTube channel and you win one of my cars, all you gotta do is send me proof of confirmation, uh, that proof of confirmation, send me proof that you won the vehicle, whether it's a video of you taking possession of it or it's a receipt for payment, whatever the case may be, shoot that to me, auto auction, rebuilds with an s plural auto auction rebuilds at gmail.com and i'll be more than happy to plug your channel like i said i want to follow along with the car as well i want to see these things continue on i think on youtube would be great otherwise bid away bid often bid high be happy i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one i got to get out of here guys i kind of botch that ending but whatever listen subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed follow me on facebook instagram tiktok auto auction rebuilds thank you again for watching i got to get out of here because i'm flying out tomorrow and i got a lot to get done today stay safe out there everybody i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one i, I got it right that time oh if you stuck around this long before i forget about it i just won a 1955 chevy yeah i just won it for $1,025. You guys are wondering what in the hell I plan to do with a 1955 Chevy that's been burnt to the ground? I want you to look at something real quick. This is something I noticed from the beginning. Looks like a total wreck, right? Why would anybody want this? Car is no good. First of all, what's this you see in the middle of the floor here? I guarantee you that's a four speed stick shift right there. Huh. What else? Uh-oh. What is that? That is a perfectly clean engine bay with no damage at all. Stay tuned.